What is the ADI model in instructional design? That's exactly what we're going to look at in this video. If you're into instructional design or educational technology or e-learning design and development or teaching, you might have heard about ADI. And that is what I'm going to talk about in this video. I'm going to explain what ADI is and I'm going to do quick explanations of each of the steps. So essentially, ADI is like the most popular instructional design model. And um, it is in many ways like the waterfall model um, in the systems development life cycle. So if you're familiar with software engineering, you might have heard about the systems development life cycle and you might have heard about waterfall. Uh, ADI is just like waterfall, except that ADI is the instructional design version. Um, so ADI is actually five steps. Um, there is A, there is D, and then there is D, and I and E. The A stands for analyze, the D stands for design, the other D stands for develop, I stands for implement, and E stands for evaluate. So let's begin by looking at the analysis phase of ADI. What happens in the analysis phase? Well, here, that is where you set your instructional goals. So essentially, the first question that you're looking at answering is, what really are you after? What are you trying to accomplish? You want to know what those goals are. What are you trying to accomplish? And one of the reasons why setting the goals is important is you can't afford to be vague about your expectations. You can't just wake up and say you want to design something and then you have nothing really planned out. If you do that, it's not going to achieve anything at the end of the day. Like they usually say, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. So this phase is really about doing that initial planning, having your definite goals. Part of that is that you gather information. You want to gather information um, about what you want to train about, but you also want to gather information about your learners. Learner analysis is, is extremely important in this phase. So you want to know who your learners are, what their features are, what their characteristics are. Um, you might want to write that in the form of a persona. A persona is like personalizing the features of your learners in one or two characters. So you say maybe George is a 26 year old man who loves using technology, um, but who has been unable to afford sophisticated computers. So all he has to learn is his phone. And then you can say Mary is a 37 year old woman who is um, completely new to technology, who has access to computers, but doesn't know how to use them. Maybe she only sees her children using such computers, so she wants to learn. Those are personas. Those are just examples of personas. They describe your target learners. And, you know, based on that, you can have an idea of the value propositions for them. What are the things that your learning must include that would make that learning beneficial to the personas, to um, the target audience? The design phase is phase two. And the design phase is... Um, a continuation of what you're doing in the analysis phase. Remember that in the analysis phase, you're going to analyze, you're going to understand your learners, you're going to understand your own goals, what you're trying to accomplish with that um, training or with that class. But in the design phase, you're now putting the learning objectives together and you're trying to translate those learning objectives into actual designs, maybe into storyboards that can be followed by the development team. You're trying to put it into um, facilitator guides, into scripts, into generally the content that can be used for the learning. 
So this is where you create training outlines. This is where you create your instructional design documents. The design phase takes you into development. And you see, the development phase is where you do the actual creation. So remember that in the design phase, you created the storyboards, you created the plan, um, maybe the, the written plan or the visual plan for what that learning is actually going to be. But in the development phase, you're going to translate all of that into actual content. So part of that might be for e-learning, it might be, um, if it is going to be a synchronous e-learning, that is where you're going to shoot your videos. That is where you're going to use um, software like um, Adobe Captivate to create the e-learning content. That's where you're going to turn the scripts into actual content. You would observe that a lot of people who are into instructional design, they operates mostly in the development phase. Why? Because that's like the crux of, um, of instructional design. That's the real goal, to create the content. And this is the phase where that content is created. Now, that, that is the case doesn't mean it is necessarily the best idea. Um, maybe it would be more beneficial for um, instructional designers to spend more time in the planning phase, in the analysis phase. Why? Because um, eventually being able to plan the learning, being able to understand the target audience and understand the characteristics of the audience and then plan learning that is tailored to that audience might help to give um, better and more effective learning experiences. So it's not just about content creation and course creation. It's really more about planning the course well so that it is effective. So I'm trying to say that all the phases are important. Don't only focus on uh, the third step of the ID model. And the fourth step is implementation. Implementation is where the training is delivered. Now, remember that in the development phase, we talked about how the content is created, how it is recorded, um, how it is packaged, finalized. But you see, the actual delivery takes place in the implementation phase. So if it is going to be e-learning, how is the content going to be delivered? Um, are you going to make use of a learning management system? If so, which one? What are the features and all of that? All of those things are part of implementation. If it is going to be a live class, what exact mediums are, going to, are you going to use? How are you going to use those mediums? So implementation is where the learners get to actually take the classes that have been uploaded to the learning management system or that are made available live um, using whatever platforms that you have chosen to use. The last phase of ADI is evaluation. Evaluation. And that is a very important part of learning. Why? Because you don't just want to teach. You want to be sure that your learners actually gained value and that they are meeting with the objectives. Remember that in the analysis phase and in the design phase, we talked about understanding the learner and then coming up with the objectives for learning. Well, in the evaluation phase, what you're trying to do is to see if those objectives have been met. You're trying to see how well the learners are able to use the learning in practical scenarios, how well they're able to exhibit understanding of what they learned, and in fact, how much they learned. So in evaluation, you carry out assessments. But then you're not only assessing the learners, you're also looking at the course itself. You're trying to understand what things can be put in to improve the course, maybe for future learners, to improve the learning experience. How can the course be improved? So that evaluation is also for you. It helps you to get better as an instructional designer or as a course creator or as a teacher. 
Now, like I said earlier, ADI is very much like um, the waterfall model of the system's development life cycle. And that implies that there are certain features that it has. One of them is that generally speaking, it is a linear model. One step happens before the next. So it's more like you're going step by step. You complete the analysis phase before you go on to the design phase. You complete design before you go on to development and you complete development before you go on to implementation and implementation before evaluation. That is the traditional flow. That said, um, now a lot of people are varying that and there are also models that vary that approach. Um, but I'd like to look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of the ADI model. So very quickly, let's begin with the advantages. One of the advantages is that ADI is effective. To a good extent, it is popular because it is effective. It works. It works. Another advantage is that it is um, easy to measure the time and the cost. Because it's a linear model, it's easy to actually determine the different things that it would entail and to even determine the time it would take and the cost that would be involved as well. And don't forget that ADI is like the um, the model that gave birth to the other ones. So the other models are based in some way or the other on ADI, maybe based in the sense that they are trying to improve uh, some of the limitations of ADI or something like that. That in itself tells us that ADI is a very useful model and it's very widely accepted. So if you understand how to use ADI, it can help you to get a job because it's widely used. But I'm sure you must have guessed the disadvantages. One of them is that it is it follows a particular order. And like I said the other time, essentially one thing needs to be concluded before another. That can be problematic because um, it means that it is rigid. But it also implies that it might not be able to accommodate changes um, as much as it should. You might not be able to bring in changes on time. You might get to the end before you're carrying out evaluations, before you then find out that there are problems with other parts of the model. And that then means that you might have to start all over again. So that problem with the rigidness of ADI can make it a pain because it might be um, difficult to bend it or to adapt it to unforeseen circumstances. It can also be very expensive because um, each stage has to be concluded before the other. So it's a long drawn, you know, time consuming and expensive process. So that's ADI. There are other models. Um, a popular one is SAM, the SAM model. And we're going to look at that in a subsequent video. Um, but if you found this to be good use of your time, please make sure that you click on the subscribe button so that you can get access to more of my content. Um, leave a like, leave a comment. I would really appreciate that. And it would help me to know what parts of um, instructional design you'd like me to teach some more on. My name is Olumide Adele and it's been wonderful having you on my channel. Thank you very much and see you in my next video.